Good afternoon. Thanks for joining with us again. Today I want to speak on the subject of setting the captive free. And the passage I want to consider with you this afternoon is in Luke chapter 4 in the New Testament part of the Bible. And it says in verse 16, And he, that's the Lord Jesus, came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. As his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He have sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord, to set the captive free. The first point I want to share with you is the fact that the Lord Jesus here, he came to the place where he'd been brought up, Nazareth, went into the synagogue, which is where the Jews met. It was a place of worship. And they, they knew him only as a carpenter. But now he was returning and is about to start his public ministry. And he goes in to the synagogue and he asks for the scriptures, the prophet Isaiah. And this is the passage it reads from. Now, first of all, he went to a place where he'd been brought up. Now, I'm sure many of you are enjoying your summer holidays in this holiday period. I'm on holiday myself at the moment. But we at Anna Gospel Hall have a desire to reach out with this message of the gospel to Kennaway, Windygates and the uh, Leaving Mouth area to, to point you to the Lord Jesus as the one that could save you from your sins and the one that could give you that home in heaven. So he went to Nazareth, Nazareth where he had been brought up. Secondly, in verse 13, this quote from prophet Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 61. And this is the, the passage that the Lord Jesus reads. And he's going to fulfill this passage. So first of all, it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he have appointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Now, we live in a, a time at the moment when there's a cost of living crisis. But in this verse here, it's not so much talking about materially poor. It's talking about the spiritually poor. We're all, we're all poor, we're all in poverty if we're separated from God. We're not, we're not going to heaven, we're on the way to hell. We're spiritually poor because we're separated from God. Then it says, to heal the broken hearted. Now many in our land at this time are going through great difficulties. Many are mourning, many are struggling, many are sad and downcast. But the Lord Jesus can bring you delivery from this. The Lord Jesus can bring joy where there is sadness. It's not that all your difficulties may disappear. It's the fact that through faith in the Lord Jesus, we can have that joy, that inner joy in our lives, from knowing our sins are forgiven and knowing that we're going to heaven. Then it says, to preach deliverance to the captives. And this is the title of my little message today, Setting the Captive Free. Now, the Bible will tell us that in our sins, we're in bondage to sin, we're in bondage to the devil. We think really that we're, we control what we do. God's not going to tell us what to do, some people would say. But actually, we're born sinners and we're a slave to sin. We can't help thinking these bad thoughts. We can't help doing, doing these bad things. We, we can't help at times um, saying things that we didn't intend to say to people, be nasty to people. We can't help sinning. But the Lord Jesus came to set the captive free. Now, we can have our sins forgiven for, by coming and putting our trust in the Lord Jesus by repenting of our sins and trusting in him for salvation. 
So setting the captive free. Now it's not like you're going to live a sinless life if you trust in the Lord Jesus. But you'll have the power to live a sinless life. Because the Holy Spirit comes into us, dwells in us. And we're not no longer in bondage to sin or the devil. But we're following Christ. We're following the Lord Jesus. Now, also it talks about recovery of sight to the blind. Now, in the Bible it tells us that as sinners, we're spiritually blind. We can't, we can't see clearly. We can't see the truth of God. We can't understand the scriptures. We're spiritually blind. But we can, just as Lord Jesus gave sight to the blind, he, he can give spiritual sight to us so we can see clearly if we trust in him for salvation. And then, finally it says, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. You know, the Lord Jesus says, today is a day of salvation. And I plea with you today as to come today, to come today to be the day of salvation for you. Thanks for listening.